I want everyone to realize that a goal isn't a place to get to. It's a place to come from. So make your choices and your actions based on if you had already attained your goal, what would the choices that this type of person that you're aiming to be, what would they make now? What choices and actions would they take now to create that future? Welcome to another episode of Bigger Than That Buffalo. And now I have another international guest with me, a soul sister, someone who's crossed my path recently. And we seem to be now on an adventure together, helping each other and supporting each other with the way we want to live our lives and our professional cares, but just as human beings as well. So I'm not going to talk about it too much because I'm sure she can introduce herself so much better than I can. But I just want to introduce her. Her name is Amy. Hi, Amy. Hey, Vogue, how are you? I'm really well. Are you keeping well? I know you're super nervous, so don't worry. <laughs> you just you just share. So I'm going to hand over the mic to you. If you can just introduce yourself and uh, how, what you're about, and then we can go into the conversation from there. Well, hey, everyone. My name is Amy D'Ambrosio, and I am an integrative nutrition health coach, which is pretty much holistic health coaching. And my specialty is helping compulsive overeaters that have binge eating disorder um, help learn to cope with life without turning to food. Um, I help them change negative mindsets into positive ones. We look at limiting beliefs and reframe them. And we also look in the areas of their lives that have imbalances that lead to feelings that make them want to overeat. So with this aspect of the way you help and support people, Amy, um, we talk about food. Obviously, food is, is a dichotomy in terms of it can be, the, it is the fuel that serves us, obviously, as human beings, we eat to fuel us. Yeah? And then it can go one of two ways. We can go into the, the healthy side of things where we know it's, it's, its purpose is fuel and it's the nutrients and the way it gives us energy. And the other side is where it becomes overeating. And there's, like you said, there's underlying things that may be happening, causing that type. So whether it be numbing out life, just trying to deal with things that are going on. It seems to be a comfort situation and the emotional side of eating. Now, Going back to before you started on this journey, where did that come from for you in terms of being a help and support and being in this place to be able to do that? Where did that energy come from for you? Gee, I don't know if we have long enough for that, Bob. <laughs> um, well, for me, it's a very personal journey. Uh -huh. um, I started off very young as an emotional overeater. Mm -hmm. um, I did it to cope with loneliness, boredom, uh, hurt feelings for one reason or another. And then as I grew older, um, it turned into compulsive overeating um, for anxiety, depression, um, anger, frustration, procrastination. I, I, I have used every excuse in the book and some that aren't in the book for finding reasons to eat. Mm -hmm. And exactly, it makes me not have to think about whatever is troubling me. And um, your own healing process through this journey where, was, where did that come from for you? Well, it came from two places. Um, it came from a 12-step program. Um, I don't know if I should be saying this on air, but Overeaters Anonymous. Mm -hmm. And also in my health coaching journey, I took 
the online health coach training program from the Institute of Integrative Nutrition and their coaching mastery course. Um, all of those gave me the ability to do the inner work that I needed to do. Um, and honestly, it's a daily uh, practice of, I go to meetings every day um, and I, I pray to my higher power, um, meditate sometimes, probably not as much as I should. Um, I feel that um, praying is me talking to my higher power mm -hmm. and meditating is listening to my higher power, mm -hmm. which is really, uh, really communicates to me through my, my own instinct my inner voice. So um, those are some things that I do yeah. towards my inner work. Yeah. Now, I know with all process of change, whatever that is and whatever that looks like, all starts from within. It starts from inside and then works its way out, whether that be, like I said, overeating, whether that be weight, whether that be mental health, you know, all these areas all start with how we change on the inside first before it starts expressing itself on our outer world, on our environment. Um, the link between the mind and the body, I think is so important and it's, it's becoming so much more relevant now, especially with mental health being at the forefront of a lot of conversations. For you as a coach, someone who's been through that process, how important was it to you for you to understand the mind-body connection and then to teach that to maybe not teach it, but help other people to understand the importance of being in sync in both areas? It's critical in, in a couple of different ways. Um, first of all, compulsive overeating attacks on all four levels, mental, emotional, physical and spiritual. So any program that's going to help you with that is going to help you on all four levels. Also, as far as the link between the mind and body, you know, you could eat celery all day long but if you've got an imbalance in your relationships or your career or your physical activity or your finances or whatever, home environment, um, none of, whatever you eat isn't going to nourish you and whatever you eat isn't going to solve the problems. So, it, whatever solution you look for should really take on all four of those areas. And, and, and what I'm hearing from what you're saying is that eating is a byproduct of something else. So it's you're trying to, like I said, numb, resolve, use that as a solution to something which is deeper than the actual food itself. Because I know um a simplistic answer to the, to someone who may be going through that process is why don't you just stop eating you know that and i'm sure I that's we're only that easy yeah yeah no that's what i'm saying and that's why it's un understanding the underlying beliefs and what's causing where that root comes from before you can get to the surface of the food because the food is the almost the last part of it it's it's digging under it's all those in it it's the symptom, mm. not the root mm. cause. Mm. Um, and how so difficult is it for you? How difficult is it for you as a coach to then, when you work with people, because what I found is that initially you're, you're, they're going through the surface reasons. You know, I, I do it because of this and I do, you know, but you need to get underneath those, don't you, to get to the real root. And with some people, it might happen easier. They're, they're more open to, 
to suggestion. And some people it's a lot more difficult because it always seems to be those surface things that are the main issue, not what the root is. So how do you have the, um, the skill set to, to tap through that? Because I'm sure that's where the real um, process starts, doesn't it? Going through all those layers like an onion to the root and then working your way back up. Well, you ask a whole bunch of high mileage questions, which are not yes or no. You have to make sure that the questions you ask cannot by, be answered by yes or no, because that's all you would get. Um, yeah, so um, you usually start asking questions that begin with what? or who, or, you know, ask, you know, how, how it, something made them feel, or what are they experiencing, or here's a good one for you. What were you thinking about right before you decided to overeat? Yeah because that's what they're overeating over most yeah. likely is the yeah. thoughts, thoughts proceed. Well, first you have emotions, then you have thoughts, and then you have actions. And of course, those first two guide the third. Mm, yeah, now. And, yeah. and compulsive overeating is both an obsession, compulsion, and an addiction. It is a biological addiction, physical addiction. Um, you mentioned, why don't you just stop eating? Well, even if it were that easy, the disease would convince our mind, oh, we can just have a little, we can handle it. But we can't. And tricking ourselves into believing that starts the whole cycle all over again. So once we start, what, there's a quote, one bite is too many and a thousand isn't enough. Once you start eating that trigger food and what your trigger foods are differs from person to person. You can binge on anything. So once you start eating that trigger food, you find that you cannot stop. Yeah. But even if you were to be able to stop, the obsession, com compulsion, tricks you into thinking you can start it again. Yeah. Now, if we talk, if we go out of your, your, the actual area you're in or, or the subject you coach on, Amy as an entrepreneur, now you to set up your own practice and you to be able to help support people. What gave you the belief that this was possible for you? To be able to help others. To be, to, to read, you know, to create your own practice and then to, to create this practice that you are helping and supporting people. Um, and professionally, that's for you know your coaching business. What believe? What gave you the belief that this was possible for you? Well, it all started in a way. I've sponsored people. I've helped people lose a hundred pounds, mm. um, and I don't mean all together. I mean one person lost over a hundred pounds. Wow. Um, which means so much to me because I saved their lives mm. and well I helped them yeah. save their own life um, and that just means so much to me and I after my hospitalization I did not have a job so and my career as a technical instructor was kind of a dinosaur because everyone gets training online now. So I wanted to find something where I could still help people. And what did I know best? 
I'm a compulsive overeater. That's what I know best. So I want to use what I've learned and accomplished to be able to help others do the same and transform their life into whatever they want to make of it. That's beautiful. And, it, and I can hear just by that expression, you explaining it to me, that that means so much to you where you can put things in place and maybe change beliefs and maybe change attitudes so that they can help themselves. Those, you know, you can, it's the analogy, you can take a horse to water, but you can't make it drink, right? So it's that. Certainly. Well, and not everybody wants to do yeah. a 12-step program. Mm -hmm. So that, although I certainly don't force people to work with me, if they're going to work with me to take, uh, to go to OA, but um, in my opinion, the more support you have, the better. But if they, but I can help them with a combination of OA tools and coaching techniques mm. to have a unique perspective to be able to help people mm. in both areas, both yeah. within and outside of the program. Mm. And I've always said, I, with words, or one thing but our body language speaks volumes and just by the way your face lights up when you say that I think um, shows me and tells me more than what your words do in terms of this is your path and this is where you are most of use to the universe in terms of your story and your journey and I'm sure you feel that you've been through this to be able to help others on this process you know so I'm glad that you, 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 you're, you're heading down this direction. Now, just a, a, an interesting question that I've always find quite, quite um, in, in, intriguing when people respond to is, what do you think inspires you most today? I get inspired by people doing inner work and improving themselves and figuring out why they do things and where it all stems from. And um, solving what they need to do. What will it take for them to create the future they want? Mm. Yes. And the young Amy, growing up, who was the most influential person in your life? Maybe um, both of my parents, but if I had to narrow it down to one, one, I would have to say my father. I have a sense of humor. Oh, you... I have a little bit of my mother's too. My mother's is like the corny stuff. My, I, but I have a very sarcastic side too. And can you but, tell me a, a little story about when you were growing up that tells me about your father? I don't know. I just. I love to hear him laugh. I love to make other people laugh, but I wouldn't dream of being a comic. But, but um, yeah, I, I get such joy from making people laugh and I laugh easily myself and I love spreading that to others. Mm. Yeah, life is too short to take it too seriously. Mm. Very true. Now, coming back to the, um, the reason of overeating, um, and a lot of it comes down to, I think, you know, where you may feel a lack of worth and a lack of love for yourself as well. Um, just on that topic, what does self-love mean to you? Well, it means a number of things. It means forgiveness. 
first of all. Um, we are only human. We all make mistakes. We can't move forward beyond our mistakes without forgiving ourselves first. So forgiveness. Um, the willingness to do what it takes to take care of yourself, no matter how hard it is. Um, focusing on the long term because it's beneficial for you rather than immediate gratification. And I mean, self-care, self-care is critical. A lot of people pack their schedule, myself included, um, pack their schedule so tight with things to do on their list. They don't have time for self-care. Whatever self-care looks like for you, whether it's praying, meditating, a mani pedi, um, uh, getting your hair done, uh, taking a walk, listening to inspirational music or reading inspirational literature. Um, all of that is so important for the soul. And um, they always say, put your own gas mask on first. Put, I mean, not gas, oxygen mask yeah. first. Um, if you don't keep, take care of yourself, you won't be any good to take care of others. Yeah. So I think that the willingness, forgiveness, self-love, um, and putting things into action, whatever you learn, it's all worthless if you don't act on it. It's in one ear and out the other. And it's that, the analogy that comes to me with that is that, you know, when you can read too much or listen to too much, but not actually implement any of it. So it's more shelf development as opposed to self development. You know, you can read <laughs> I like content. that. It's true though, isn't it? Just, there's no point taking more information in if you're not going to do anything with that information. There's no point reading the book if you're not going to take even one thing away and actually try and action that to see if it makes a difference in your life. And um, I've, I think over the years, I've come to try and slow down in terms of if I read a book, maybe read it twice or three times because there's so much more that comes out of it. Or if I hear a podcast, maybe listen to it twice or three times because there's certain things you won't hear the first or second time and you may hear it the first time. So, Well, what frequently happens is you're at a different point in time and your mindset or perspective may have changed. Yeah. So you'll take away different things each time you read it. Yeah, yeah, agreed, agreed. There are certain and, things I read more than once too. And I've got one book now I've, I found, you know when you find your one book that you're like, this is, this is mine, this is the one that speaks to me the loudest. And I always keep that now near my bed. Um, and just sometimes I pick it up and open a page and just, I just need to read one page. Give me the page I need to read and I read it and it gives me what I need to hear. And it's nice. It's not nice. It's nice feeling that I don't need to overburden myself with information anymore. It's about trusting myself that there's enough in me to, to know the way if I just go quiet enough and not try and numb myself with information. Just trust in the process and trust in the path, right? So is there, on that juncture, is there anything that you are proud about that no one really knows? That no one knows? Something you may do in silence or something you may think or some, some, some little actions, maybe there's some processes that you do that you're like, I actually, or something that's happened in the past that you're like, that's actually helped me a lot. Well, they things not, that have helped. They may not have shared openly. You may, some people may know you, but you don't really openly share it. Well, I mean, every morning I have five daily readers that I read from. Uh, a daily reader meaning it's like one page or so, 
per, per day, for every day of the calendar year. Mm -hmm. um, they are, um, well, my favorite of all time is The Language of Letting Go by Melody Beatty. And she also has more language of letting go. So those are, are the top two. My um, second favorite is um, Daily Meditations uh, for Overeaters. It's actually called Food for Thought, Daily Meditations for Overeaters by Elizabeth L, if I'm correct. There's also For Today, from Overeaters Anonymous and Voices of Recovery from Overeaters Anonymous. And it really, reading those every day kind of sets the tone for the day and sets me up for success. Nice, nice. And we all I also pray. Yeah. yeah. I pray, I find that a lot of times we think that our higher power doesn't it doesn't concern itself themselves whatever however you define your higher power with the little actions that we take in our lives the little choices but that's so untrue for me higher power is loving and uh, can do anything and wants the best for me and all of that. So I pray for the willingness to stick to my plan of eating for the day, the willingness to do things that I wanna do regardless of the fear that I have surrounding it. Um, I pray for the fear to be removed as well, but even if it's there, I need to, pray for that mm. and I hear that I hear that because it does bring you outside of this doesn't it you know this this we, we can wrap ourselves up in our own thoughts but when we go outwardly express that new energy comes into that process and it's like when you speak your fears out loud you realize they're not really fears they're just stupidness in your head talking but in your when you when you're actually using the same energy to try and solve the problem that you used to create it you're never going to go anywhere because it's the same energy that we're using, right? We need to shift it somehow. So what I'm going to do at this juncture, Amy, is I'm going to lift the mood a little bit and I'm going to go into a 10 quick five question round, okay? So these are 10 quick five questions that you just need to answer with whatever comes off the top of your head, okay? So there's not really much thought, it's just whatever comes out. And it's quite interesting that so much rubbish comes out and, <laughs> and we just go with it because it makes us smile, all right? So um, I'm gonna, um, let me just queue up my question. Just bear me one second. Just like uh, what animal I would be. Yes, uh, yeah, similar to that, similar to that. <laughs> um, so here we go, okay. Where would you go if you could be invisible for a day? into a room of friends, see what they're saying. Yeah. Maybe my funeral, Perfect. see what people say about me when I'm gone. And then having the choice to then change those words if you need to while you're living, right? Yeah, Perfect. If you, on the same juncture, what was the last film you watched? Uh. Uh, it's probably uh, you clearly do too many more important things than watch movies <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but I love but I love movies so tell me what you love been, rather than the last it could have been Infinity War and and <laughs> yeah yeah no that's fine now okay. I'm going blank on the second one uh, um <laughs> We'll go with that one. No worry, we'll go with that one. Okay. What's your favorite flavor of ice cream? That's hard to narrow down. 
One. Rocky Road and pralines and cream. <laughs> wow, wow, you're greedy there. You got both of them. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Hey, you're talking to a compulsive over here. Yeah, yeah, I forgot. <laughs> right. Um, if you could be fam world famous for one thing, what would it be? If I could be famous for world, one thing? World famous for one thing, what would it be? Saving lives. If you could, if you had a yacht, what would you call it? Oh, there's so many. Uh, maybe inspirational. Yeah. Um, are you a morning or a night person? More, mm, I'm f I forced myself to get up in the morning, so I'll have to say night. Morning. Perfect. On a scale of one to ten, how cool are you? <laughs> Seven or eight, maybe. If you were stranded on a tropical island, what two things would you want with you? Water, uh, I guess food to survive. Yeah. And if you could write a book about your life, what would it be called? Serendipity. Oh, I don't know if that's already taken. Doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if it's taken. But it's, it's Serendipity yeah. by Amy. So it's, it's, <laughs> that's not taken, right? So um, thank you for that. Just to 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 <laughs> pick up that. I like the way you had double ice cream flavor there. Um, uh, the snuck, <laughs> snuck it in. in. Yeah, snuck it in. Just put it in. Don't worry. <laughs> hey, I know how to sneak food. <laughs> Right, so now we're heading towards the end of the podcast, and I'd like to ask you a couple more questions for the listeners to understand a little bit more about how you think and you as a person. Now, we've reached 100 years into the future where you're at the last moments of your life. Now, you don't have enough energy to speak, but you have any, enough energy to share three words. Now, these three words have resonated with you and helped you all your life. What would these three words be for you and why? I want four. <laughs> I always want more. Uh, well, the three that I've mentioned already, willingness, mm -hmm. forgiveness, mm -hmm. action, and I was going to say love. 100%. I think all of those are self-explanatory. I don't think we, I can hear also from what you talked about during our time together all of those three things, four things resonate deeply with you. So thank you for sharing them. And this podcast is called Bigger Than The Hustle. And right now you're bigger than the world. So I've sourced a microphone that's connected to 7.58 billion people on this planet. They can all hear you. They're all conscious. They're all awake. They all can speak English and they understand you. And they're all listening, ready to hear what you've got to say. If I can hand this over to you for the next 30 seconds, what would your message be to the world? I want everyone to realize that a goal isn't a place to get to, it's a place to come from. So make your choices and your actions based on if you had already attained your goal, what would the choices that this type of person that you're aiming to be, what would they make now? What choices and actions would they take now to create that future? 
because um, the actions that we take today, of course, create our future. Mm -hmm. So uh, if, it's, if it's in mental health or whatever, what would a mentally, physically, spiritually, emotionally fit person do today to get that way? Yeah, and it and it and it's embodying that today, isn't it? Even though you may not be there and you may not be not be near, by embodying it, it makes you think as that person, and therefore you can make decisions based on your future self presently. So your future self can look back at your present self and thank him and say thank you for making the decision to make me the person I am today. So thank you for that, Amy. Um, and well, I just like. Just like to say, Amy, at this juncture, thank you for coming on as a guest. I know this was a really um, nervous situation for you to be in, and when Outside I put it out to you, yeah, <laughs> and I and I know when I put it out to you, it was it was a bigger challenge to say yes than it was to say no. And you took on that challenge, and you took on well. You've shared your thoughts and you've shared your wisdom with us today, so thank you for that. Also, I just love the way you're you're coming into the world. You know your your energy of trying to help and support and be the person you use your journey use your pain as someone else and gain something else um and i love it when people use that process to be the person they are in front of the piece that they people in front of because you teach by example as opposed to by a textbook so thank you thank you thank you and just continue to be on this path now just before we go is there anything else like you'd like to say No, just to urge people to create the future of their dreams by taking action today. Mm -hmm. And I hear that loudly. And I see you doing that already just by being on here today because this is the new Amy, the new out there Amy. Good boy, no. That we're going to see more of, yeah? That we're going to see more of. So thank you. Thank you so much, Amy. Now, thank you for having me. No problem at all. Now, this was Bigger Than The Hustle, and I am Fabric Patel, I'm your host. And just a few thoughts to leave you with before we go. Big energy leads to big thoughts. Big thoughts lead to big ideas. Big ideas lead to big actions. Big actions lead to a big life. So keep keeping big. Until next week, goodbye. So if you're grateful, for what was given to you. If we love each other, if you give, I think the world will always be a better place.